What's up everybody, Arctic Platypus here today, bringing you another video on Battlefield 1. This time I'm just going to show you gameplay and talk a bit about all the different weapons coming in for the new DLC, the French DLC, They Shall Not Pass. So um, in the CTE it's now av it's available for uh, all premium players, I think. I'm pretty sure you just go to the companion app and you can... Uh, get accepted you don't even need a code or anything you just log into origin and it uh, should be right in your game library so yeah i've been playing a bit of the battlefield 1 cte trying out the new maps the new guns uh, i finally got all the main primary weapons unlocked this video is not going to cover the tanker and pilot gun the um that's like the 1903 extended i'm not going to do that one i heard it's just not that great honestly and um I mean, the pilot and tanker classes, it's not too much about the infantry weapons they have. It's really just about their vehicles. So I'd rather spend time using uh, the new tank rather than using the land ship to unlock the new gun. Um, but yeah, I unlocked all the other guns, the both for the assault. Um, I didn't unlock all the variants of some of the types of guns, but I have most of the stuff here. Let's get right into it. I'm going to start with assault, and I'm going to start with the um, Shogren inertial shotgun. So this shotgun is a very interesting shotgun in real life. It's actually the first to use the inertia loading system. Uh, it's actually pretty influ influential for later shotguns. Um, and the, the gun actually was not made in France. It was made in Sweden, and I think that might be why DICE decided to put it in. It's a Swedish company that might have a sweet spot for that gun. I don't blame them. It's a pretty cool gun. It looks awesome in game. It just It's one of the coolest looking guns you can find in this game. Um, I don't know, the back of it just looks so distinct. You will not mistake this for another gun, I can guarantee you that. It carries five rounds and um, it performs a lot similarly to the M97, even though the M97 is a pump shotgun and this one's semi. Uh, I don't, it, it doesn't have much range, but it packs a serious punch at close range. You can see in this gameplay, it just it's pretty good. If you try to go out a little bit too far, too far with it, though, it's not going to do too well. Uh, the other assault weapon they added actually was a French weapon. It's the River Rolls uh, 1918. I, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that correctly. I know it's wrong. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's actually a very interesting weapon. It's more of a mid-range SMG, and it's actually the real one. It's a carbine rather than an SM, SMG, so it fires a a little bit bigger of a round. It's still pretty small, the round, and um, it was actually never really used during the war. It was just a prototype weapon, but it's very interesting. It has, it has a bipod. You never see that on an SMG or a carbine or anything. It's just so cool to have that um, in this game, I, I, I feel like. It's definitely a unique weapon for the assault class. You can pick off people at some crazy ranges. It's not like effective at doing that, but it can. It's it's accurate at those ranges. It just does very low damage at a certain distance. But yeah, you can see in the gameplay, it's a very fun weapon to use. 25 rounds in the mag. It fires the same speed as the MP18, 550 rounds. And that bipod, it's just it's it's pretty useful if you can find the right spot. You don't want to like set up with it for a long time. But if you can find a good spot, the bipod can really come in handy. Just get some accurate sprays, you know. And even if you uh, aren't bipoded, aiming down sight is still really accurate at a medium distance. And then you can still hip fire, of course. It's just nowhere near as accurate as the MP18 or the Automatico. And the recoil is a little bit more <laughs> intense. But the gun is a lot of fun. I think everybody will like it a lot. Um, Moving on to the Medic class, they uh, got a new semi-auto rifle, the RSC-1917. I think this is one of the best rifles that's ever been at, that, that has ever been in Battlefield 1. Um, I mean, most other rifles, yeah, all the other Medic rifles have uh, either the ability to three-shot or four-shot people at close range. And this gun changes it up a bit, bringing it up to a two-shot kill. And that's, I mean, that's very significant for a game like this. Uh, at close range, you can just go bam, bam. That guy's fucked. He's dead. Um, I mean, it only works up to like 40 meters, I think. But that's actually a pretty damn far distance. The only thing that counters this high damage output is the slow rate of fire. So it's still actually not the most... Um, the highest DPS for 
a medic rifle. The auto-loading 8.35 variant beats it out just because you can fire so fast with that damn gun. But um, the RSC is definitely a fun weapon to use. If you can if you can be accurate, you can fuck people up just straight up like they're done. You can kill them so fast. They, they don't even have a chance. They, like, you can be SMGs, anybody, honestly. It's, it's great. Um, I don't think it's overpowered just because you, it's such a slow rate of fire. It's, uh, I think it's like 160 rate of fire. Um, it's, uh, it's really slow, but if you're accurate, it's, it's a damn good gun. I'll move on to support. I think this might be a lot of people's favorite gun, the Show Show um, machine gun. It's a very powerful gun. It's the only LMG that can three-shot people in close range, and it actually keeps it, uh, a lot of its damage at, over a longer distance. It still isn't that great at a long range, but it does better than a lot of the other LMGs. I would say um, this gun might actually even be better than the BAR in certain situations, just because you can three-shot people. Even though the rate of fire is really slow, they did take some, uh, some creative liberties, DICE did, and they actually increased the rate of fire versus the real gun counterpart. The real gun fires at 240 rounds per minute, whereas uh, the one in game fires 360, which is actually a lot faster, but it still feels slow, so I think they did the weapon justice, and it feels awesome. I love the gun. It looks so cool. You have that very distinct magazine, and you can actually see how many rounds are left through the side of the magazine. It's very awesome. Uh, the gun just feels powerful, and it sounds awesome, too. I think they did a very, very, very good job with the gun. I, I would, I wouldn't call it overpowered. The, the LMGs. A lot of people think uh, they needed some work. I mean, I was always a big fan of the LMGs. It's just kind of like my go-to kind of weapon in these games. I mean, you can't beat just sustained firepower. Um, that's what I like to do. But the show show is awesome. You only get a 20-round mag, but damn, it packs a punch. It's great. Uh, moving on to the last gun I'll be covering. I mean, there is another gun for the pilot and tanker, but as I said, I'm just going to go over the main classes here. So the last gun that I'm going to talk about here is the LaBelle. Um, bolt action rifle for the scout. Eight rounds tube fed, so the reload's a bit long. Since you have to actually load each individual round, there's no um, big clip loading. That's That was one of the actual major downfalls of this gun in real life. Um, that's why the Gewehr was a lot better, one of the reasons. Um, but actually, this gun was very ingenuitive for its time in 1886. It was the first gun to ever use smokeless powder, which might not sound that interesting, but it actually gave it a big advantage at uh, extended ranges. It had a lot more ranged effectiveness. Pretty interesting. Uh, but yeah, this gun is in-game. It performs a lot better than I think the real-life version did. Um, I only, I've only unlocked this sniper variant, it was pretty easy to unlock, but it's it's pretty damn good, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not a big scout, so I, I got some gameplay, but it might not be the best. Uh, I mean, I would say the gun, it's, an, it's a midpoint between the SMLE and the Russian 1895. Uh, I mean, in terms of the sweet spot mechanic, that's how it's a midpoint. But I mean, you can still use snipers at range if you're getting headshots at a, at a very long range. Um, I mean, if you're going for a very long range, though, then 1903 Springfield is still probably the best option. But, uh, for sure, I, I like all of these guns a lot. I actually think DICE did a very good job with this DLC. Some of the maps at the moment are a bit, uh, eh. They're a bit meh, you know, but, like, a Rupture especially, it's really one-sided sometimes. Sometimes you can just absolutely dominate uh, all the way to the E objective as the French team and then the Germans just get absolutely dicked trying to get out of their spawn they have nowhere to go and they need to do something about that because it'll turn into a potential another Suez situation even though the map's way differently organized than Suez but yeah it's, 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 it's I'm just talk, I'm kind of getting off topic here it's supposed to be just about the weapons but you know if, if you like this video please leave a like if you're new please subscribe Hope you enjoyed, and thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic day.